This week we're gonna talk about insurance. Okay, so these things can be plugged in and, and this stuff is on uh, out on Canvas as well. So it should be on week uh, eight, I believe, is where it's at on Canvas. And so this, this can be, everything in this, uh, in this slideshow can be moved over into your personal financial plan, right? Because insurance was one of the main parts of the plan that we haven't done yet, right? So that's one of the ones we haven't plugged in. Uh, yeah, week eight right there. And there's the slides. So these slides are out there. That's the first link that you see on there. And so I just, I'm going to talk about it and then I'll post uh, this video that I'm talking about online as well so you can review it if you want to. Okay. So insurance, right? This is, and, I, and we're going to talk about the different insurance that are, that's in the total money makeover book on page, it's on page 71 in that book. So if you want to refer to that as well. That's, uh, there's a section in there where Dave talks about insurance and what makes sense and what is like kind of a myth, right? What doesn't make sense, uh, at least according to him, right, out there, and some things to avoid with insurance. So there's going to be five main types that we're going to talk about. And all of these, all five of these need to be in your financial plan. You need to address all five types in there. Okay, so you can have insurance as as like a main topic in your plan, right, a, a main part. And then uh, you need to have the current situation for each of these five types, and uh, you need to have the uh, an action plan for the future, okay? Yep, for the check-in assignment, you're specifically gonna talk about health insurance for the check-in for this week. Uh, and there's different types of health insurance alternatives out there, okay? Uh, if there's one that's not listed, you can totally, if you like know of another alternative, because there's always uh, kind of different ways people repackage health insurance and different um, kind of in, in response to the political side of things that's happening, right? So there's all sorts of different options on health insurance. So pick some of the ones that are listed or yeah, on this week, for week eight, you have to you have to do that. It's a discussion, basically. You're gonna like write, do a little write up, and submit it. But oh, on page so just for insurance in general, it's page seventy one. Or you can look on the the top link on the week, and it'll have these slides in there, and they will also kind of go through them. And I'll I'll post this. So I'm I'm recording this. I'll post it out there as well. So first type. Okay, so does that make sense? You have the insurance as your main header, then you're gonna have like home and auto, auto and homeowner insurance. Uh, if, you, if you're not a homeowner, you can have renter's insurance, that's okay as well, right? Kind of the same thing, depending on what you're doing with housing. Um, and uh, your current situation, do you have auto insurance? Do you have homeowner or rent insurance? And when are you gonna need it in the future, right? That what's your action plan for it? Okay, so so one of the main things, right, is we have this up. One of the main things that uh, is kind of a guiding principle when we're talking about insurance is um, there is a cost benefit analysis, right, between how much insurance costs someone typically and how much benefit they can get out of it, right? So typically, uh, the, um, there's two things. There's deductibles and premiums, right? So what's a premium for insurance? What is, what, what is that? What, what's a premium? I'll ask you that. What's a premium? Premium is the price tag, okay? So premium is what you pay for the insurance coverage. Does that make sense? So in this little slide, lower premiums equals higher deductibles. So what are deductibles? What's a deductible for health insurance? It could be for car or health or any, any kind of insurance. Right, right. So they're deducting it. What they're deducting it from, this is the side of the insurance company. That's what they don't have to pay, but you have to pay. Does that make sense? So that's what the person that buys the insurance has to pay before the insurance company even starts paying. 
right? Does that make sense? So for example, if I have uh, auto and home, auto or homeowner's insurance, and my, my deductible is $500, then that means when I get in a wreck, I have to pay the first $500 to fix my car, then the insurance company will help me, okay? Does that make sense? So if we have a high deductible, is that a good or a bad thing? It's what you have to pay, right? So if it's high, you're gonna have to pay more, right? So, so, but you have low premiums. So that means your payment to even have insurance is low, which is good. But that means if you do get in an accident, your payout or your deductible is high, right? So, um, this is this is typically where insurers get uh, get the consumer in some in some ways get them meaning um, this is where they like they like you to buy insurance plans with high premiums because typically high premiums mean uh, they are guaranteed money from you right more money the better right high premiums that means a high price tag right uh, at the same time are you always going to have to use your insurance. Hopefully not. You have incentive not to use it, right? You have incentive not to wreck your car. You have insurance. You have incentive not to get in an accident and hurt your body, right? <laughs> Typically, people try to protect their health, right? And so, uh, they, that, that, they, like you, they like to sell you insurance with high premiums and low deductibles because they make more money and hopefully people aren't getting sick or, or in a wreck, right? So, with this one, auto, auto and home insurance, um, the trick is this, okay? And that's why we have the second bullet point here. Lower premiums mean it's easier to fit in your budget. You have high deductibles. So what, what do you do with the high deductible uh, insurance plan? Well, you can have a high deductible insurance plan if you have your emergency fund in place, right? So you have an emergency fund, save a, a 500 bucks, right? And your deductible is 500 bucks. So if you get in a wreck, right, you wreck your car, and you have to pay the first 500 bucks, you, you cover yourself, right? You're basically your own insurance, okay? You save your, you have your emergency fund there just in case. So what does that do for you? Well, for one thing, it, it lowers your premium so you have more money monthly to do things like save and invest and, well, even buy fun things, right? But, uh, and not go into debt, um, but your emergency fund is key to do this, right? To have a high deductible health plan, if you don't have an emergency fund, is not smart, right? Just in case, what happens? What happens if you wreck your car, you don't have 500 bucks for the deductible, you're stuck, right? There's, you're gonna go into debt. And that's not a good situation. You don't want to set yourself up to go into debt, right? And so that's one of the things that you do to make this work. You get the, you get the cheaper insurance, right, with the higher deductible, but you make sure you have your emergency fund set up, right? And how do we set up an emergency fund? We don't just get lucky and have an emergency fund like, you know, you got to do it monthly, right? You got to save money over time and get it built up, right? You got to make choices on the budget side to have that emergency fund. You, what were you saying, Chase? Yep, you got to set it aside, right? Set it aside to keep it liquid, keep it separate is the emergency fund deal. Okay, next type of insurance, life insurance. Is every, does everybody die? <laughs> Yeah, right. That's kind of a that's kind of the what two things in life that are for sure. We're all going to pay taxes, and we're all going to die. Okay, so so uh, life insurance is uh, not not a bad idea, right? So what? Why do you buy life insurance? Do you buy life insurance to make your relatives or or your dependents wealthy when you die? Uh, not necessarily. That's not the purpose of it, right? The purpose of it is not to make people rich and and like happy for you, happy that you died when you die, right? Not not the insurance, not the purpose. the The life insurance is to help do a couple things. It's to help you uh, make sure that when you die, that your estate is taken care of, and your estate typically is something like 
you have a business or you have you own assets, right? You may have a little debt, right? You, you may have some debt. The idea is when you die, your death will not be a burden to other people, right? That's the whole idea of life insurance. Not to make people rich necessarily, but to make sure that when you die, if you're uh, an earner in your house or you know somebody else is gonna take care of your funeral and your estate when you die, you wanna make sure that it's not a, a mess, right? You got all this stuff. So that's so make sure you have life insurance to cover. This is the key here on the on the second little star is 10 times your income. That's the general guide. 10 times what your annual income is, right? So, so if I make $100,000 a year, how much insurance should I have? Million bucks. Is it possible to get a million dollar insurance policy? It is, it is, right? And, there's, and that's one thing, um, I'm, I'm trying to get uh, this week to get, a, uh, this week or next week to get a, um, somebody to come in and talk to us, an insurance person to come and talk to us about it. So they'll talk to us a little bit about possible policies and things. So there also is um, something called a 20 year level. That's just a type, right, of insurance. Term insurance as well um, is on there. I noticed on some people's when they do their uh, net worth, right, if they have life insurance, they will include their life insurance in their assets. Is life insurance an asset? It's possible that it could be. So there's different types of life insurance, right? So there's whole life, there's life that you pay for and you actually build up a, a cash value for your life insurance. That before you die, you could even cash it out, okay? If that's the case, then yes, you can put that on your asset, you can put that on your net worth statement if you have whole life. Um, so, whole life dave dave ramsey here in, in 71 or at through that chapter he says whole life is not a good investment right if you want to invest your money invest it right don't put it into a life insurance okay life insurance is an expense in your budget it's not an investment on your on your balance sheet okay there's better at what places to put your money than whole life insurance okay uh, life insurance companies are not investment companies, right? That, that's, that's not the way they're built. Um, so do term life. Term life is kind of like a, a car insurance or a health insurance, right? You pay for it. As long as you pay the premium, you've got, you're insured, right? It's pretty, tip, term life insurance premiums are typically pretty low. They're going to be pretty low. Maybe a couple of hundred bucks a year something like that, right? To have several hundred thousand dollars of life insurance, okay, for a couple hundred bucks a year. Especially if you're young, like you guys. If, you, if you're young, term life insurance is super cheap, right? As Soon as you get into your 50s and 60s, life insurance gets a little more expensive, right? Doesn't mean you shouldn't have it, but it's typically uh, more expensive, right? So, um, yeah. Again, not a place to store your money. So whole life insurance and, and annuities and that type of stuff, steer away from those. Steer away from those. I've gotten a lot of, a lot of and we'll have an, in, uh, our investment guy is gonna come in in a couple weeks um, from Edward Jones Investment. He's gonna come and talk to us about it. That's one thing that he'll tell you as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, so there, this is the third one. Third one, long-term disability. What do you think this uh, insurance is for? For, for what? For veterans. Ve veterans, okay. Okay, okay, good. So, so this could be for both, right? Typically, veterans will have, um, will have insurance or, or um, they'll have benefits through the military, right, if they're a veteran, with kind of this long-term disability terminology. Uh, but that's that's like a veterans package, right? Which is good. That's good for them. Those of us who aren't veterans, right, can also buy insurance, um, and and sometimes this is also done through employment. Right? For example, here at the college, um, I have long-term disability through the college. That's just a benefit I have at the college, 
And what that, what that does is if I get hurt, right, if I get injured and can't work, then they will pay me um, a certain amount of my uh, income. So I can pay my bills and not lose my house and all that stuff, right? Um, until, uh, hopefully, until I can work. Long-term disability is not lifetime insurance, but it just is longer than, there's a, another version that's called short-term disability. Why, why, does, why, does, uh, why do you think uh, Dave Ramsey says, don't buy short-term, buy long-term? Okay, right? So you don't, know, you don't know, right? If you get hurt, right, it could be longer than you think. Good, good. What, what about in the short-term? What, what do you have if you follow Dave Ramsey's uh, guidelines? What do you have for the short-term to help you? Going back here, what's, what do you have in the short-term to help you, hopefully, if you get hurt? Emergency fund, right? And hopefully health insurance, right? So health insurance can also help us in the short run. And your emergency fund hopefully will be able to help you in the short run as well, okay? So it's typically short-term disability is more expensive. Uh, and it, it's only like, um, it, there, there are some plans to do like AFLAC and different things that are not necessarily bad. I mean, they could definitely have good payouts, but they're typically a little more expensive and they're only like uh, 30, 60, 90 day, right? So really super short, really pretty sh super short on that. Um, so, and then typically it'll, it'll make up 50 to 60% of your income. So it's not gonna make you whole after, if you have disability, but at least it'll help you keep going until uh, you can get another plan in place. Make sense? So long-term disability. All right, health insurance. This is the big kahuna, right? Um, this is number one cause of bankruptcy in the U.S., right? It are health issues, right? So if people are cooking along, they're, they're, uh, they even have a job, you know, or they're feeling pretty good financially, one big health issue could put most people upside down in debt, right? So health insurance is... That's kind of the, one, the main goal or one of the main things for health insurance is to help you not go into bankruptcy, right? Not stay out of debt with healthcare debt because it can pile up really quick, okay? So um, same thing, same thing with health insurance as back in the home and auto, right? High deductible is something that Dave Ramsey says is good with an emergency fund in place, right? Because that high deductible can be, so for your car, right, for example, a high deductible is going to be maybe a thousand bucks deductible. That's pretty high for a car insurance. For health insurance, what do you think a high deductible is going to cost you if you, before the insurance will help you? Okay, well, it depends on what type of uh, accident you have, right? If it's just like a broken leg or something, you probably will end up paying the whole thing if you have a high deductible, right? So it'll, it'll be, high deductibles typically are going to be like 10000 bucks and up, up to 15000 right? That's the deductible. That's a lot of money right up, up front before insurance even kicks in, right? So, so if you have a high deductible uh, insurance, right, then you've got to make your, uh, and if you're able to do that, you've got to make your, your emergency fund a little bigger than 500 bucks or 1000 bucks. Does that make sense? So if that's your goal, if that's your action plan in the future with finances, you've got to say, I'm going to do a high deductible health plan, uh, health insurance plan, and I'm going to bump my uh, emergency fund up to 10,000 bucks, right? That way it's there just in case I need to use it for health stuff. Okay, so then this is one you can write on in your, uh, your check-in assignment for the week is a health savings account. So that is a, a, a special um, account you can have. There's, the other, there's another name for it. Um, th there are different packages if you're like self-employed, right? You're like, or you're like, uh, if you're a farmer or rancher, there's different versions of this. But basically what happens is, is you can save money pre-tax, so you don't have to be taxed on it, for health uh, reasons, right? So you can say, I'm, a, I'm doing an emergency fund for health, right? 
so you can save money quicker when you don't have to pay taxes on it. That's kind of the, the goal, right? As long as you use it for your high deductible health plan, government will let you do that. Typically, if you make money, the government says, I get to take part of it, right, for taxes. But in this case, the government has made special rules and they've said, you can make money and save it for health stuff and we won't take taxes out of it if that's the purpose, right? So they'll let you do that. It has to be with a, with a financial institution that has uh, the ability to have a HSA account open for you to save into. So, so anyways, with that, you've got low premiums. That's the number one thing. So health insurance premiums are expensive, right? So how much does health insurance cost per month? What are some things that go into it? Well, one of the main things that go into it is if you're just insuring yourself or if you're insuring yourself and a spouse or partner, right? And if you have dependents like kids, right? So if you have a whole family plan, it's going to cost a lot of money, right? If it's just you, you can get a health insurance plan uh, in the high hundreds, right? 800 bucks a month. That's not, that's not, uh, that's pretty ordinary, right? If you're insuring the family or two people, you're going to be over a thousand bucks and closer to 2000 bucks a month just to pay for health insurance. Okay. So, so some of the things that help, right? If you, if that's one of the big things with employers, right? Is, is finding a job that has health insurance. That's nice. Right. So, um, but it's pretty, it's not common, it happens, but it's not really common to have an employer that will pay all of your health insurance. They'll have you pay some of it out of your paycheck still. That's pretty common, right? Especially if you're covering a spouse and kids. They'll, they'll provide you health insurance and they'll give you some help towards it, but a lot of times they will require you to, uh, to do out-of-pocket payments for your insurance as well so all right so any questions on health insurance what do, what do you what's what are you doing now right this is for the this is for your plan right what are you doing now for health insurance and what's your plan for the future right now if you're on your parents health insurance a lot of a lot of um, I mean you can be 26 and still on your health and your parents health insurance right that's that's the, one of the new rules, right? They came with the Affordable Care Act. Um, and so that's typically uh, what I get from, from students that are doing this is I'm, on, I'm still on my parents' health insurance, which is fine. That's your current state, right? What about when you're not, right? What's the plan then? So that'll be good to plan for and um, figure out what you're going to do. If your plan is to Get, if your employment leads to maybe working for an employer that usually provides health insurance, then that can help you out with a future plan. Yep. So, yeah, what are you doing currently, right? What do you, so what's your current health insurance look like? And then what's your action plan for the future? Okay, we're almost there. So this is, let's see, this is, I think, the last one. This is our last slide. Okay. So this is the last slide. This, this one's hard to wrap our head around, right? Because even Mr. Bell's not even in this boat yet, right? Even, even though I'm an old guy. Okay, so long-term care insurance. So this is something that Dave Ramsey says, this is something you need to consider in your, in your financial planning. Um, and so what is long-term care? My little picture down here. Yeah, so when, when you get old, right? And I was actually talking to my eight-year-old about this, right? Like, like you start out in life, he, he actually noticed this, right? Because it was kind of interesting because he, he must have been talking to some kids at school about it. And he says, guess what, mom and dad, when you get old, some old people wear diapers. And I was like, yeah, it's interesting how the cycle of life happens, right? Like when you get old, it's hard to walk, just like it was when you were young, right? When you get old, it's hard, it's hard to remember things and talk and do all the other stuff that you used to have a hard time with when you were just a small, small kiddo. But so it comes around, right? Um, the alternative to long-term care is, well, 
the good die young sometimes, right? So, so you know, the alternative is not necessarily better than long-term care, but it just depends on what life brings, right? So long-term care, right? This is important, especially for 60 and older. So you've got to include this in your, in your uh, personal financial plan, right? This is one of the five types. So currently, what are you doing with it? I would say uh, probably 100% of the students will never have long-term uh, care already in place. Just not gonna happen, right? Okay, but what's your future plan? And your, the future plan, at least according to Dave Ramsey, is he says, once you get to be 60 plus, you, you should have something in place. And what, what happens is, is if you end up, or if one of your loved ones, you can also buy this for a, a, a family member too, right? And so if, if you or a family member uh, end up in long-term care, right? Assisted living, that kind of thing, right? We used to call them nursing homes, okay? There's all sorts of different types. It's gonna cost you $40,000 a year at least to have them in, in the assisted living. And it could be double that, okay? So, um, that's what this long-term care insurance does. You pay a premium and they insure a certain amount per year to help pay for long-term care, okay, going forward. So what does that do, right? That does a couple things. It, it, helps, it helps you protect assets, right? Yep, see ya. It helps you protect assets. So especially if your family has, a, has a, like a ranch, a farm, a business, right? Or, a, or even a home, right? And you don't want that to go away because of long-term care, right? So what happens is you, you end up in long-term care and they say, okay, here's the bill, pay it, right? If you can't pay it, then um, you, you've got to find an alternative, right? You either can't be in long-term care, which is not feasible for most people, right? So grandma has Alzheimer's, right? She needs medication. She needs 24-7 care, right? Can't leave her alone. She's going to burn the house down, right? And so what happens is that's all, sometimes alternatives aren't possible. Some are. Like I, I lived in Japan for a couple of years, and it's super common in Japan to have grandma and, grandma and grandpa or whoever, mostly grandma because she's the one that survived the longest, living with the family. Right, so you'll have like three or four generations in the same house, but that's not as common in the U.S., right? And especially because people are still working, right, and all that stuff. They had in Japan, for example, they had uh, grandma and grandpa daycare, right? So, so the 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 working couple, right, got up, they got grandma or grandpa or both of them ready for the day. They got their kids ready, and then. They, on their way to work, they gra drop grandma or grandpa off at the daycare for, uh, it was called a rojin home, is actually in Japan. And then they drop their kids off at school or, or daycare, right? So, so anyways, but, but the alternative is basically 40K plus a year. And so this pays it. That's possible. For example, my grandma, right? My dad's mom. She had, she had her house paid for. She had the extra money and all this stuff. She... She had a good retirement. She traveled and did things. And, but when she got to the point where she was in uh, long-term care, right? My parents couldn't take care of her. My dad was still working and my mom physically couldn't help her. Um, she ended up in long-term care. And they, they basically made the choice to say, we can't afford this every year, right? And so the alternative was basically you sell the house and the money goes to pay for that until it's gone. And then the government has programs to pay the rest. So how, do, how long do you think my, how long does my, uh, does the average stay in long-term care last? So just a few years? The average, average is eight years. Now you think, you think like grandma and grandpa get old and they, they just like kick the bucket and die? No, they get old and they keep ticking, right? Health, healthcare is super good nowadays, right? And one of the benefits or one of the things that happen because of healthcare is people are living longer and long-term care facilities are full of people that are living longer. 
good, good business to get into. If you want to get into a good business, figure out how to get into long-term care. Super good business. So, but anyways, but on the other side, right, for us that aren't getting into that and everything, this could be a good insurance to have. So include that in your personal financial plan. Currently, you don't have anything set up, right? Say that. Um, action plan for the future. When I get to be 60 years old or 65, whatever, um, I'm going to buy uh, long-term care to offset my costs, and, and we'll talk. I'll show you kind of some places to look for cost and what that would cost you. Okay? And I think that's it. That's all of our slides, right? So we have five of them. So auto and home, life insurance, long-term, and health insurance, and then, and then long-term care. So long-term disability and long-term care, right, are the two long-terms. And all of this is in page 71 as well in your total money makeover. And that's, the, that's your insurance section, right? Does that make sense? So if you wanna like have a down pat insurance section that Mr. Bell's not gonna like put a bunch of red marks on when I grade it, have all five of those in there. Have current, what your current situation is with them and what your future action plan is with each of those five. And you'll be set.